Hello everyone, my name is Remy. I come from the Eat Staker and the Steakhouse community, and I'm here to demo the If Wizard tool. The If Wizard is a very nice little tool that can guide anyone through the different steps to become a fully functional validator on the Ethereum network. So let's get started um, with the GitHub uh, project page here. I'll provide the link in the description below. So if you don't know where to find it, um, make sure to check out the description. Um, let's get started with the actual command to launch the wizard from your terminal, right? So if you're in a terminal like this one here, all you have to do is copy and paste this command here. And there you go. You get started with the wizard. Um, you might have to enter your account password um, because it runs as a sudo. All right, so the first step is sim simply a greeting page uh, with some information about the wizard. Let's get going here. Um, this is a simple overview of what's needed to become a functional validator there on the Ethereum network. So the first step is um, having 32 ETH. Um, in this demo, I'm going to use the Prater network, which uses uh, a girly Eve, which is uh, free, uh, essentially, um, so you can test your setup if you want to. That's a recommended uh, thing to do for anyone who wants to get involved in um, this kind of uh, setup. Um, next, we'll install an execution client. In this case, it's going to be Gef. Uh, we're going to generate our validator keys. Uh, we will install a beacon node, a, a validator client, we will perform the deposit and then we'll have to wait eventually to uh, be activated as a validator. Um, the wizard can perform a system test uh, to make sure your um, setup has some good hardware um, requirements. So uh, if you want to do it, um, I'll do it on this, uh, this setup here. Uh, it's going to check your disk size, your disk speed, uh, your memory size, and your internet speed. So let's uh, get started. Um, I failed the first test, unfortunately, but in this demo, I'm not going to need the, the full 900 um, gigabyte of like recommended available space on my setup. So I'm just going to keep going here. This is just for a demo on a test net, which does not require as much space as you would need on a main net. Next, this is going to perform the uh, disk speed test uh, with a tool called FIO. So we'll just wait here for the test to be performed. Shouldn't take too long. There you go. You can see the test being run right now. Now hopefully my disks should be fast enough here. There you go. Um, we can see that we passed the test. Um, we have uh, 12.7K read IOPS for the disk and 4.2K write IOPS for the uh, write speed. Let's keep going. Um, 
seems like our memory size is large enough. Um, so let's keep going for the next test. Next, the next test is going to be the speed test for the internet speed. So let's see if my internet speed is uh, fast enough on this system here. There you go. You can see that I have uh, plenty of uh, uh, bandwidth allowance uh, for uh, to be a validator here. Let's keep going. This is a step where you'll be asked to select a network right so if you want to do the actual thing if you want to become a validator on the mainnet you would choose the first one but in my case since this is just a demo i'm going to use the prater network you can also see that there's currently a bunch of validator waiting to join the network right so the protocol for ethereum um, has this queue when uh, there's a lot of people trying to join at the same time uh, which makes it possible to limit the amount of people joining uh, or quitting uh, for, for that matter. Um, and in this case, uh, we'll have to wait at least two days before we can uh, be activated on this uh, network here for Prater. So let's use Prater and let's keep going. Uh, we can choose um, the ports that will be used for the clients. Uh, in this case, um, I'm just going to use the default one um, and and even though they're not configured on my network to be open to the internet um, I'm just going to proceed here but if you were to do this uh, setup on your own machine um, I would recommend you do the port forward uh, that is mentioned here and if you need uh, help to do that uh, we can support you through the eStaker community so let's choose the default ports and let's keep going with the GIF installation, right? So GIF is an execution client for the Ethereum network. And all I have to do here is click on install and wait for GIF to be installed. Shouldn't be too long here. There you go. You can see that GIF is being downloaded and it's already installed and started. So the wizard will wait a few seconds before testing GIF, but once um, the service is started, um, the tester will like the the wizard will already will automatically test the the GIF client to make sure it's working and it's uh, syncing properly. So depending on how fast a GIF uh, starts syncing, we might see the next uh, screen. For a few seconds or many many minutes but let's see um, how long uh, the wizard will have to wait on GIF to start syncing properly here so this is a a progress log page where you can see GIF's log and you can see its uh, syncing status right now it has not connected to any other peer so it cannot start syncing, but uh, you can see sometimes that it goes to one and goes back to zero. Uh, sometimes it just tries to connect to different peers on the network. And sometimes it fails, so it just starts again. Uh, we're, still, we're still at zero peers. Um, so I guess we'll have to wait a little longer for Geth to start syncing. So this is part of the um, the automation that the wizard brings. It'll uh, make sure your uh, setup is actually working properly and that all your clients are syncing uh, correctly. So you just saw we were connected to two peers just a few seconds ago 
and it failed to start syncing. We're also using, in this case, the snap sync from Geth, which is somewhat recent, but like all the recent clients should have it. And then as soon as we get a good uh, peer that has a snapshot, we should be able to sync properly. There we go. So we just confirmed that Git was installed properly and um, that it's uh, currently syncing. So then the next step um, is where the wizard will ask you to add a fallback node, right? So for your beacon node, um, it needs data from the execution uh, part of the Ethereum network. And there's a bunch of uh, public nodes that you can use as a fallback, right? So we just installed Geth locally on this uh, computer. But um, when your uh, Geth client is syncing, like it is currently, um, your beacon node can fall back on another source. And there's a bunch of different public sources that you can use. And I suggest you add one. Uh, we actually recommend using at least uh, the free tier account from Infura and Alchemy, which are two great providers for uh, public endpoints for all of those, uh, all of this data, right? So let's let's add one, and uh, we'll use the um, Infura. So here I already created a free account on Infura, and I already connected, and I'm I'm on my dashboard here. So if I wanna do an Ethereum endpoint here, an execution. Um, endpoint. Um, I have to go to this first icon in the left column here and I have to create a project and I have to name it. So I'll just uh, name it demo. And then um, I have to choose the correct endpoint here. And since I'm on the Praetor network, I have to select the girly um, endpoint, which is the the blockchain for the the execution blockchain for the Praetor network. So let's copy this endpoint here. It starts with HTTPS. It has all of these uh, data here. Um, you should actually try to hide this part here, which is your um, uh, project ID. Um, it's like a private information um, that I'm showing you right now, but I'm just gonna delete this project uh, later on, so it won't be uh, useful to anyone. But like, if someone gets a hold of this information, it could like render your account useless if uh, it gets abused, right? Um, so let's let's just copy this endpoint here and use it in our um, use it as a fallback node, right? If you select the wrong uh, endpoint or the wrong network here, you, it'll tell you uh, that you selected the wrong one. So right, so now we have one execution fallback node. Um, if we were to do a full setup on mainnet, it, it'd be preferable to add at least another one. Like like I said, uh, Infura and Alchemy have both uh, free accounts uh, where you can create endpoints for your setup. Um, and I suggest you do so, but in this case, in this demo, I'm just gonna keep going here. The next step is going to be to install the Lighthouse, right? So Lighthouse is uh, an Ethereum consensus client um, and the wizard is going to do uh, everything on its own here. So all I have to do is click on install and let's see how it goes. The wizard will uh, download the uh, Lighthouse archive and it also verified that the uh, signature um, matches the uh, team's uh, public uh, PGP key, right? So that's an added security uh, for you as a user. So let's see if the wizard can actually download the PGP key here here um, it often takes a while to get those keys for some reason let's see if it if it can do it in the next few minutes
so it seems like it failed to download it from that first PGP key server, but it used another one and it, and it worked. All right, so we have a bunch of uh, PGP key servers that we use just to make sure if one doesn't work, it can use the, the next one. All right, so Lighthouse was installed and we just uh, created the Lighthouse Beacon Node service. Uh, we'll wait a little here just to make sure it starts properly and we'll uh, test it. And there you go, that, that was a quick one. Um, we managed to test that the Lighthouse Beacon node was started and is actually syncing properly. Um, this is the open uh, port test. Uh, it unfortunately failed in this case here on my machine. But like I said, I didn't configure any open port or port forward on my network devices. Um, so in like in a real situation, you would want to do this, but th since this is just a, a demo, I'm just going to skip it here and keep going. All right, so the next step is going to be creating your mnemonic. So we have a, a few warnings about it here. And you actually have a choice here. You can either import um, your uh, keys um, if you want to generate them offline and I would recommend you do so um, this is a a good uh, practice uh, in terms of security to generate your uh, validator keys on a offline laptop for instance and just copy them on a USB drive uh, but since I want to make this easier on me here I'm just gonna click on generate and the wizard is going to download the F2 deposit CLI tool and generate the keys for me on this actual machine. So let's go ahead with, with this step here and I'm just, wanna, I'm just gonna click on keep going. I'm gonna choose the English language for my mnemonic. I'll say that I wanna create one validator. I'm gonna type password for the key store and this is my mnemonic or my uh, seed phrase and so um, i'm just gonna copy it here because the next step uh, with the cli tool is going to ask me to enter it again in a real world scenario i would want to write it down i would want to make a few copies of it um, I, I would want to store it in different places just to make sure i keep it safe the mnemonic or the seed phrase is actually the most important and critical information for your whole setup. As long as you have your mnemonic, you can be sure uh, that you can um, uh, recover from any scenario. Let's uh, paste it here again. And the CLI tool is going to create all the files needed to become a validator. All right. Let's keep going. Um, the next step is to import the key store we just generated uh, with the with Lighthouse. So let's do it. Um, I'm being asked to enter my key store password, with, which I just created uh, when I generated my um, validator keys. Uh, so let's try to enter the correct one here. Yes, it was correct. I just confirmed that we imported one um, key into the Lighthouse Validator client. And the next part here is going to actually create the Validator service for Lighthouse. So it's showing us right now the logs for the Validator. Just to make sure it's working properly. It seems like it's working properly. You can see a few warning and a few like error messages, but those are simply because our beacon node is not in sync yet. Right. And so this is the, the next step uh, before doing the deposit. Um, the wizard will um, tell you uh, to wait uh, before doing the deposit until your beacon node is in sync. And if you look at the logs being shown in the middle, here eventually you'll see a message about the estimated time 
before your big note is in sync. You can also see like the current sync distance and the head slot. So it, it means that we are 1 million to 100,000 slots away from the head. And that will have to wait it like uh, a few hours or a few days before the beacon node is fully in sync before doing the deposit. That would be the um, preferred approach. Um, but since, since we know that there's a queue right here uh, of 2,624 validators waiting to join the Prater network, um, we can take the guess that um, by the time our deposit is being included and our validators are our validators been activated uh, we should be um, in sync already for the Praetor network right so I could just skip this step here but Eventually, I should be able to see a message telling me how long the beacon node is thinking it'll take before uh, getting fully in sync. But for this demo, I'm just going to skip this, uh, this step here since I want to show you all the remaining steps. All right, so I get also this uh, this warning about um, if I keep proceeding here uh, that I might miss some re reward um, between the time the validator is activated and the beacon node is uh, fully in sync, right? So it, it can take a, a few hours, even, even a few days before your beacon node is fully in sync. And if you get activated uh, before uh, your beacon node is in sync, um, you, you will miss the, the few rewards uh, in between uh, until your, your beacon node is fully in sync, right? So your validator actually needs your beacon node to be in sync before you can, uh, before it can start performing its duty. And you, and you could choose to quit the wizard here and come back a few hours later or like even a, when, one or two days later um, to resume it from uh, this step, um, but I'm going to keep proceeding here just to show you the remaining steps. So the last part of this uh, wizard is doing the deposit on the launchpad, right? So the launchpad is a nice website created by, uh, uh, I, I'm guessing, the Ethereum Foundation or at least founded by the Ethereum Foundation. Um, where you can do your deposits safely uh, using the deposit file that was created in, that was created while you performed the validator key creation. So we'll use that uh, deposit file and we'll go on this website here. I only have a, a tab open on the Predator Network uh, Launchpad, and so I'm just, I'm just gonna follow different steps here. If you've never uh, done any deposit using the launchpad i suggest you read all of those uh, nice messages here where they'll explain you the risk involved and the precaution that you should take before um uh, getting involved uh, i've done a bunch of uh, deposit in my life already i've seen all of those uh, warnings before so i'm not i'm not gonna read all of them but i strongly suggest you do if you've never uh, read them Let's get going. We already uh, chose a, a, an Ethereum one client or an execution client. Um, the wizard did it for us, so there's nothing I need to do here. Uh, it's the same thing for the F2 or the consensus client. So nothing to be done here. I created one validator. So let's enter one here. Let's keep going. Um, this is uh, asking me for my deposit uh, deposit file, right? So let's select it. The wizard is telling me it's on 
this path here, so let's go and find it. Should be in temp and deposit data. All right, let's keep going. I'm gonna choose to do the deposit with MetaMask. I'm not actually going to do the deposit because I don't have any uh, girly F in my account here, but you can do your uh, deposit on the um, girly network using uh, the bot on Eve Staker uh, Discord. Which is what which is what I'm gonna use here. So that's gonna be another demo for um, for doing so in your setup, All right? So um, it's telling me that I don't have enough uh, girly f in my account, and I, I can choose to get some using uh, some of the faucet uh, URL here. Um, but you should know that uh, some of those faucets are kind of hard to reach uh, these days. Uh, so I'm just gonna use the other technique. Here, I'm just gonna remove the disable uh, field on this button here so I can click on it and keep going. Um, like, if you were to do this deposit on mainnet, uh, you would use like real um, if, and so you would need to have the actual value in your wallet. But since this is just on a test net, I can actually just keep going here. Right now, I need to do the deposit, so let's click. Let's click get this button here. I'm just gonna copy the data here, and I'm just gonna need this uh, data here to use the if staker uh, buff. Let's uh, go in Discord, and if I want to do the deposit, all I have to do to get my deposit done by the if staker buff is copy and paste the uh, x data with this command here the exclamation point girly f and the request girly f um, channel and so i can see here the actual link to the deposit that was just performed on the beacon chain uh, website so let's check it out see if it was accepted So I'm getting a validator not found message here saying that the deposit was not found, but it might be that the Beacon Chain website has not been able to see the transaction yet. So I'll just have to wait a little here um, and maybe I'll refresh the page uh, a few times to see if the deposit was confirmed on Beacon Chain. Um, I was just there. You go. Let me let me show you this page so you can see it. There you go. Now it was confirmed um, on the Beacon Chain website. Here, um, it's actually seeing my deposit uh, with my validator public key. All right. So once I'm sure that the deposit was completed i can just click on i'm done here and um i'm getting to the final stage of the wizard here which is simply uh to tell me that i created one validator that will soon uh, be activated and that i can monitor my uh activation pretty good on the beacon chain website uh, so this url here since this is on the prater network and like if you if you click here you can search for your public key and you can find your validator here or you can search for your um, if uh, wallet address as well uh, the address that you use to do the deposit and you can find your uh, validator here as well and i'm pretty much done if um if i need more support or if i need more help i can refer to the eve staker community and that's it uh, when I click quit, I also have this uh, little message here showing me the network that I just used, the number of validator that I just created, and the public keys for those validator. You can see this key here should match with this key over here, which I believe it does. And that's pretty much it. 
that's pretty much how the uh, wizard works to get you uh, started with your own setup so i hope you enjoyed um, i hope you learned how to use it uh, if you need more help if you need more support the eve staker community is gonna be uh, glad to help you just make sure to get in touch with us on discord or on the official reddit the official um, if uh, staker uh, subreddit so that, that's it for me thanks everyone bye bye